Are you ready to feel free again? Our Visa Rewards Card can help you create the fancy free sensational lifestyle you've been dreaming about over the last year. University Federal Credit Union's Visa Rewards Card offers up to five times the rewards with every single swipe, along with industry best travel rebates. You can redeem rewards for cash, travel, purchases, and so much more. Now you can breathe easier and explore more with your new favorite rewards card from University Federal Credit Union. Apply today at UCreditU.com. For such a crazy car market where no one has vehicles, Tim Daly Infinity is your home for an incredible selection of great, quality, used vehicles for any budget. And the best part? Most are backed by the Tim Daly Forever Warranty. Tim Daly Infinity still wants your trade-in or to simply buy your car outright with a quick payoff. Don't wait. Come see us today. Think Tim Daly Infinity and think... It's forever Inside Sources. Inside Sources. Inside Sources. Where KSL offers Utah deeper insights on the news. Host Boyd Matheson divides rage from reason and elevates the conversation on issues crucial to our community. On KSL News Radio 102.7 FM and 1160 AM. Well, as might be expected, many Republicans have been speaking out against President Biden's multi trillion dollar spending packages and trying to build off kind of the Tea Party movement to oppose big government. But is the message past its prime? Are we really to the point that the Republicans can no longer talk about financial responsibility? Let's begin. Think you know the news of the day? Think again. Julie Bikowitz is a national political reporter for The Wall Street Journal, whose work focuses on money and influence in Washington. She previously worked at Bloomberg and the Associated Press, covering two presidential campaigns and the White House. Uh, she has a great piece in The Wall Street Journal uh, talking about the Republicans find this message to reduce spending a tough sell. Uh, we're often the equal opportunity offenders here. Uh, but Julie joins us now to help us break it all down. Julie, thanks for jumping on with us today. No problem. Thanks. Right, well, so let's uh, let's jump into this in terms of uh, where are things. Uh, the Republicans don't quite seem to have a rallying cry that uh, is really working in terms of, hey, we can't spend so much money in mo- anymore. Well, you know, it's interesting that we're now sort of in a position where Congress is talking about spending a trillion dollars on an infrastructure plan and another three point five trillion dollars on, I don't know what you want to call it, reconciliation, social safety net expansion. So that's quite a bit of money. It's quite a bit more money than was on the table back in 2009, the last time spending was really, you know, front and center in the news. And I wanted to sort of see what regular people were interested in, um, in terms of spending, if that was resonating at all. So I went to a couple of events hosted by Americans for Prosperity, which is a a conservative group that was very instrumental in galvanizing the Tea Party back in the day, and uh, just found that even among activists, other issues are sort of taking up a lot of bandwidth that uh, Republican leaders kind of wish were more focused on an anti-spending message. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that you noted that I think is is really interesting, and that is over the course of the the last few years, the pandemic in particular, uh, that a lot of the the spending that I think people have gotten used to uh, was sort of agreed on by both parties. Of yeah, we don't like to spend more, but you know what, we just need to spend it. Yeah, there's a couple different um, points that were really interesting. One, looking at Pew Research Center surveys, you can you can see a, a pretty substantial substantial dip in the number of Americans who want a smaller government right around the time President Trump was elected. And that that's interesting because President Trump wasn't he was known for a lot of things, but really cracking down on government spending wasn't so much his main message. So some of the Tea Party leaders uh, from 10 years ago that I that I talked to for this story said that they felt like in some ways, the Republican base was sort of inoculated in a way against this anti-spending message by having it really not be a big message during the Trump years. And then, of course, we just went through a, a pandemic, um, still in a pandemic, and the government 
felt the need to spend lots and lots of money to keep the economy going. And, you know, people in both parties largely agree with that. You know, it was a crisis. There was a need for lots of government spending. So it's just there are two sort of sets of dynamics here that make it a little bit tougher than you would think for Republican leaders to make that anti-spending message penetrate. Yeah, I think that's interesting. I've been wanting to ask you after reading your piece, uh, did you see a real interesting compare and contrast? Uh, we know that, uh, again, kind of in that Tea Party movement, there was the the bailouts and the TARP spending, uh, and that became mm-hmm. an issue even for a lot of Republican candidates that were then, you know, challenged uh, in primaries uh, versus where we are today. Yeah, I think that some of the issues that are now really sort of captivating um, Republican audiences are much more local. You know, you're talking about local vaccine mandates, local mask mandates, what's going on in different school districts. I mean, again, even at these, you know, gatherings that I attended that were put on to sort of promote this anti-spending message, the chatter in the room, you know, before and after the speakers was all much more focused on these local and in some cases kind of cultural battles and issues. And so that just seems to be where the energy is now. And that's that's really going to be a challenge for Republicans who want to make spending a big midterms issue. They're sort of figuring out how to make that message resonate a little bit more than it does right now. Yeah. And Julie, I'd love to get your perspective in terms of how this will shape the midterms. It, it, again, I think you've hit it spot on in terms of where the energy is. It, it clearly is not on the spending issues. It's more on uh, some of the social issues, some of the broader uh, interparty issues. Uh, how do you see that as we start getting closer uh, to a real crucial 2022 midterm? Well, there's a couple things here. One, quite a few of the, the leaders that I talked to for this story said that inflation does seem to have a little bit more impact. That is, if if people see the price of gas going up, they feel like they're spending more at the grocery store, then it is very possible that people will start saying, hey, look, this is all connected to the government spending too much money. My household goods are costing me more. And, and that is one way for spending to come really back into the fold. And then another way um, one of the attendees at this event I was at in Fort Wayne, Indiana, kind of pointed out you know, there's a way to make a connection between mandates that the government has and local issues and just this overall theme of the government is too big. And that, I think, is where you might see Republican candidates go in the near future as as elections um, start creeping up on us here, just kind of not so much focusing on and big spending, but just big government. And within that umbrella, making this argument um, again, some of the mandates that are that are really sort of the conversation piece right now, but also the spending that we're talking about here in Washington. Oh, fantastic. Great insight. Uh, Julie Bikowitz uh, joining us from The Wall Street Journal. It's a great piece. We'll put it on our social media today uh, so you can give that a look. Really important analysis and really important conversations, I think, both for the left and the right rolling into the midterm in terms of a lot of these kitchen table pocketbook issues that I think ultimately will drive the elections. Julie, thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. All right. I, I think it's so vital that we look at these things because for a lot of folks, it's it's less about just cutting big government. It's about fixing broken government. It's also about those inflation things that uh, Julie talked about in terms of things that are impacting real homes, real neighborhoods, real communities, and who will be able to really focus the nation on those issues and how all this spending plays into it. Uh, much more to come, much more to think through as we think again here on KSL News Radio. Next, we're going to talk about what it means in terms of impact from churches. There's an, in, uh, an economic factor of faith. We're going to explore it coming up next. Think again with Lloyd Matheson on KSL News Radio.